Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about the awesome Spectre console. Now if you're building a console application in .NET then just default to using this straight away, it is awesome. So let's have a look. So this is the website, it's on GitHub, it's open source, it was started by the awesome Patrick Svensson and he's actually been on the podcast talking about Spectre consoles. So if you like this video go check that out too. So if we look at the website, what does it do? Basically, it's a component library for .NET console applications, kind of. So you've got all of these kind of things, different styles, tables, charts, various things. Oh, that's worth looking at, actually. Live updates. And one thing I really like about this is the documentation is very, very, very good. It's so easy to get started. So if we just start with a new .NET console application. So there's nothing, I've not done anything to it. It's just file new project. And if we then go to the documentation and up at the top, there's a quick start. And to get started, we just install this NuGet package. So you can do it from the command line. I'm just going to do it from Rider. And then, oh, well, let's copy the example here and see how quick it is to get started. So I'll tend to, to insert the user statements. And what I'm going to do, because the the colors in the console window of Rider aren't great, I'm going to do it in here instead. So um, just comes a bit more colorful. If I do it here, it's kind of... I don't know, it's just not as, it's not as rich, and especially when we show the other components. So let's have a look at a few of these components. Now, when I start a console application, quite often, a lot of my console apps might want a selection drop down. That's probably quite a common one. So let's start with this one. So we've got text prompts to ask something. We've got selection. So let, let's go with this one. And again, it's so easy to just copy and paste and play around with these. This is what I like about this. And I think I'm going to change some of these. So this is, what's your favorite fruit? Let's change this to, what's your favorite podcast? Uh, I won't bother with those. And let's add some choices. Of course, I've got to start with this one. Um, and let's add a few more. What have we got? Um, that's quite a good one. Uh, obviously. And let's add a few, let's fast forward in time a bit. So by the magic of editing, I've quickly typed a few and there's a bunch of really good podcasts that I tend to listen to. So if I, oh, and let me just change this fruit podcast. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it as that message. Let's give that a go. So I've got a nice just thanks to the magic of Spectre Console, a nice selection. So it's got scrolling. And obviously I'm going to be biased and choose this one. And hopefully you agree. Right, let's have a look at the next one. Let's look at exceptions. So quite often, if your application used to throw an exception, being just the same color, it's quite hard to read. So let's give this a go. Let me let's just delete all this. And let's say oh, I um, turn the exception bar catch. And then paste that in there. Let's see what this looks like. 
Yeah, so that's straight away. We've got much nicer exceptions. So this, there's obviously a lot of controls here, so I'm not going to go through them all. Another one I wanted to show was, where was it? Canvas image. This is quite nice. We can just, it leverages image sharp. So we need to add this package and then we can just quickly render images. So let's give that a go. And then let's just copy this. And I'm going to change the image for for this one. So if I run this now, it's went to this. And if we actually get rid of this, we can make it a bit higher resolution. So that's pretty cool. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to just look through this list of components, grab one and start using it within seconds, really. Let's have a look. So we've got a table, which is pretty cool. A tree. Bar graph. I'm not going to click on every single one. A uh, calendar. Grid component. Layout component, so if you want to do a console up with different panels. Diglet, oh, go on, let's give this one a go. I don't know why I retyped that one. And... <laughs> Pretty cool. So another thing, Spectre Console also has this concept of Spectre Console CLI. And this basically allows you to set up your console app to have different arguments and parameters and things passed on via the command line. So let's let's just take this. Oh, I need a new NuGet package. This one, Spectre Console CLI. Brilliant. And their basic example is kind of like getting files in a directory and getting the total file size, I believe. Let's just simplify this a bit, just to make it... Let's just change this, so let's say name, and enter your name. Oops. And, and so this is a command argument. We've got command option as well, and we'll see this in a sec. So let's just change this to age. Let's keep this a really simple example. Int age, and let's go to that one. And then, so each of these seems to be, you've got, it follows the command pattern where you've got your own class. So if we just change this name command instead, and then it takes in a generic type of this your settings class, and your settings kind of defines all the arguments you want your command line tool to take in. Then you've got an execute command which does your logic. So again, we can get rid of most of this. Let's do a more simple example. And we say, um, hello, and then settings. Oops. Can't type when people are watching. Settings.name. Oh dear, oh dear. And so, what we could this is this is optional here. So we can say um, if settings dot age is not null, then um, 
you are something like that. So that's a bit of a simpler example. So let's run this. So I've not entered anything. Now, reading through the documentation, I was looking at how to make this compulsory. And it looks like this is by convention, these braces, um, square brackets here. And if I make them angle brackets, that's the convention to say it's compulsory. So if I run this again, we now get helper text because we've need to do more. So this is all generated for us automatically. Remember, this is a new console application. So if I say Dan, we get this. And you can see the difference between the argument and the options here. We've got the minus A, which is specified here. So if I do minus A and, of course, 21, then oh, what happened then? I think I probably need to do that. Yes. Yeah, so it's... Oh, by the way, DN is my alias for .NET and .NET Run. And because I hadn't put the hyphen hyphen, it was seeing this as an argument being passed into the .NET Run command rather than our application. So that's what that hyphen hyphen does. So you can see, hello, Dan, you are 21 years old. Yeah, right. So that's a super simple example. And... There's a whole bunch down here. There's a whole bunch of more advanced options and documentation about how to use it, but it's probably out of the scope of this video. And finally, let's just look at the appendix. So we've got a whole bunch of various things like emojis and spinners. So we've got a bunch of emojis you can put in your console application. We've got spinners. So yes, yeah, so it's a very cool library. There's so much stuff and. I can't think of a console application I've written before that wouldn't benefit from something like this. And again, if you enjoyed this video, just definitely go and check out the podcast, episode 14, where Patrick joined me to talk about this. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe down below and see you next time.